Welcome back, Jason. How are you, buddy? Not too bad. You know, not, not healthy, and uh, but locked up and going crazy like everyone. I think uh, we were going so crazy and so locked up with our kids that we took the uh, step of actually using them in a sketch. We did a second chance theater, which now seems like a long time ago. I know. And uh, I could only use it in the end of one of my kids. Axel, it turned out, was too young to act. So Ash was in it, but both uh, Daisy and Otis came through big time. Are they different actors? Are they different uh, kinds of performers? Very different, very different process. Uh, yeah, Otis is Otis is a like a premise guy. He's he's like one of those those kids that uh, I had friends growing up like that. They're like, hey, what if Mr. Doyle did this? You know, and you just sort of sit in the back of the classroom and and you're just kind of like pretending. What if we threw something into the to the fan? And uh, Otis is that guy. And then Daisy's just full on Daniel Day Lewis. She's just in it the whole time. She she wakes up Olivia almost every morning coming into our room going, Mama, will you? Pretend I'm a baby horse named, you know, screwdriver, and and then <laughs> then lives. Okay, yeah, come here, sweetie. And then she crawls in the bed, and then she just, and then does the same thing. But she will stay in it forever, <laughs> if, if, if until you yell cut, and then sometimes beyond. I uh, she definitely uh, she was the standout of the three. I will I'm willing I will willingly admit that. Um, yeah. Your wife Olivia also had the idea, this was, Ted Lasso was a character you did in a series of commercials for NBC Sports a few years yeah. back now. Um, and Olivia was the one who suggested that maybe this could uh, expand into, uh, you know, the kind of character that could carry a show. Yeah, and I totally forgot about that until uh, Brendan mentioned it, our buddy Brendan Hunt, who's, who's on the show and one of the producer's writers. Uh, he mentioned it in the press and then Liv mentioned it to me at home. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, we were out to dinner. And she explained the whole thing to me. And she just liked the fact that we enjoyed doing it, loved working with, you know, our buddies, Brendan and Joe. And and similar to the reason I enjoy doing it is because it's he's just in a good mood a lot of times, especially by the time we did the second commercial. And she was like, you should, you should look at doing this as a TV show or a movie. And then she reminded me that I just sort of sat there at dinner and just started ripping. I was like, well, why is he so happy? Oh, maybe he's going through something. And, and then I kind of just went in my head and ruminated over, you know, deviled eggs or who knows what some back when you could go to restaurants anything possible <laughs> and this was uh you know i really i love the commercials and and they definitely played off the idea of a fish out of water an american yeah. football coach who was uh in charge of a, a a british soccer team i will say i was surprised uh and delighted by the change in sort of tone of this show i mean there's still the fish out of water quality but you have a very upbeat, optimistic, sort of Jimmy Stewart type attitude about what you're embarking on as this coach. High, high praise, yeah. That, I, I really do believe that that happened from getting to do the second commercial because the first commercial, the whole premise was he gets hired by uh, the Tottenham Hotspurs and then gets fired three days later. And so when those commercials did well, they asked us to do a second one, but they're like, but you can't go to the UK. We don't have the budget for that. And it's like, okay, all right. Well, then maybe he just loved his brief time there and fell in love with the sport. And it was that like childlike enthusiasm that really unlocked it for me and made it really fun to play. And I just think him being relentlessly stupid would be impossible. Our big rule in the writer's room was like, he's seen Sports Center. He knows that, a, you know, like, he knows the ball has to go in the net. I do like that he is, uh, it shows that you can be cheery and optimistic and also not stupid because even when people make fun of him, he uh, is both cheery and you can tell on your face as an actor is aware that he has just been burned. <laughs> I, yes. like, I like that depth of character. It is, uh, it really like steers away from being cartoonish at all, which I think is, is, uh, is just fantastic. Yeah, the, the, the mustache is about as cartoony as it gets. Uh, it, it, we, we really, but yeah, that was a bit, that was a, a big thing for us was, was um, uh, I also love that old, do you remember that Del Close quote, you know, our, our you know, improv guru, did you have sure. him when you were in Chicago? Yeah, but, but Tree, I missed him, I missed him. Yeah, yeah, you were in, you were at Boom, you were in Amsterdam at yeah. that time when he was doing his thing. He, um, but he would say, you know, treat your audience like, you know, poets and geniuses and they'll rise to the occasion. And, and I, I feel like, you know, Ted, that, that, that it's nice to know that it is coming across that, that, yeah, Ted knows he's being insulted. He just, he just knows that it's, that, well, they don't know me well enough to really be talking about me. Uh, you know, the other thing we talk about is like Ted is kind of like mushrooms. He's sort of egoless and people put their own thing on him and he's just kind of like, yeah, all right, well, okay. He just, <laughs> just, just bounces off him because again, if you don't know someone, how can you hate them already? It's not for the right reasons. It's, it's their own stuff and, and it doesn't rattle him in the least because, you know, he's kind of like, oh, it'll, I'll, I'll find my way here. 